Welcome back to the News from the Real World podcast. And uh, this segment we're starting off with having a theater degree versus an MBA. So a theater degree versus an MBA. Um, this, is a, this is a debate that I had in my head before investing in grad school. <laughs> it's funny because I always called it, and I was helping a friend move, and we were just moving furniture, and they'd be like, oh, wow, you're so good at this. Yep, that's my useless theater degree, moving theater. <laughs> sure. um, no, but this article is from uh, The Change Agent, a guy named uh, Brian Sibley, and uh, he talks about uh, basically the ways that his theatrical training and his theater degree in college kind of work to his advantage in his sort of non-theatrical job. He's a PR director, PR person. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really get that, but I don't think that really matters. <laughs> he talked sure. about, I mean, he talked about being resourceful and how, you know, if you can, if you can produce a musical on $900, you know how to stretch a budget and that makes right. you, that makes, those are skills. You really just talked about the skills that you acquire or that you should acquire if right. you make use of your theater degree. <laughs> and how those are applicable in the business world and being flexible and being resourceful. Because and theater and artists have to do all the jobs at some yeah. point. Yeah. So you learned it mm -hmm. as a, with a, being, having a background in theater, it applies to every other business because mm -hmm. you can always fill in holes. Mm -hmm. you know? and my, my favorite thing that he talked about, though, was he said that his friends in business school were learning about how to sell things or learning how to, you know, um, cater to the public, learning about customer service and things. And, he said, but in theater school, we were actually selling tickets. We were actually participating in a business and making a product and selling a product. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't get that in a business school training. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe my friends at, you know, Warren or whatever it is that business school you can, they might they might argue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to go that far. My friends at Tepper might argue. <laughs> yes, yeah, indeed, indeed. All right. Well, All right. CMU drama, you. you uh, you keep getting your degree because it's going to lead to good things. Uh, yeah. Eight creativity lessons from a Pixar animator is our next article. It's from zenhabits.net by Leo uh, Babauta. And uh, this article, um, uh, Leo took his young teenage daughter on a tour of the Pixar studios led around by a guy named Bernard Houks. Uh, who's a character technical director. I guess he's, he figures out the movements of Pixar characters. Yeah. And, uh, and um, Leo kind of took away these eight lessons on creativity that he got from, from uh, Bernard. What did you guys think of them? I think it really was fun. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, I just loved the kind of the picture that you got of Pixar, which was a whole bunch of people working together for yeah. a common purpose with no ego yeah. and just like chucking out ideas after ideas after ideas and then sort of culling them down until you're getting something really refined and beautiful. Well, as theater makers and producers, we certainly know a lot about that, don't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He talked about, as, as I was reading, I just thought, oh my God, these people must be so smart and so impressive and they're so lucky to work with each other. And, and then the last one was, surround yourself with heroes. I was like, that makes yeah. complete sense. Yeah. You know, if you, I think a lot of art, because it is so collaborative and you, you aren't doing so much brainstorming, you can only be as successful as the people around you, you know? Right. And Read, reading all the blogger comments, people kept mentioning the idea, one, one of the lessons is leaving your ego behind. Yeah. And uh, I have a, this is from Jenny. She says, some of the best collaborative projects I've worked on were ones where no one thought they were better and people evaluated ideas rather than fighting for their own. Um, that seemed to be the thing that spoke to everyone. And I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, it seems like in, in the creative process, it's the best idea that should, should stay in the room. Yeah. And you can't really have any personal stake mm -hmm. yeah. in it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, does not, it does but not work. It's, it's also that fact that the best idea will emerge through somebody checking out something and then building on top of that. Yeah. It's not always like, oh, my idea got chosen. It's no, it evolves. this idea yeah. has yeah, it's evolved. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the word evolved implies um, tenacity. Like it didn't, it didn't just happen overnight. Like it took time and it took work. 
Yeah. And it yeah. took. Yeah, um, they, they mentioned Chuck Jones, the famous Looney yeah. Tunes mm -hmm. animator. Yeah. Did he had this quote about, "Well, you you do a hundred thousand drawings mm -hmm. before you have a good one." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, wonderful article. That uh, brings us to the Cultural Trust. Yeah. It's for uh, rubber <laughs> ducks. Tell us about the rubber ducks. Not quack, quack, quack. such a wonderful, yeah. heartwarming story, but a lot of It's not. Um, so it's about the Cultural Trust versus Joe Voss. It's on Voss. Uh, from that'schurch.com, Virginia Monterey, who's a uh, local Pittsburgh blogger. Um, so basically, I mean, I think people know that there's a giant rubber duck. In there. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it too. I haven't seen it. Yeah. 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 Well, it's part of the, the festival of firsts, and uh, this is the first time it's been in America, but it's been like an art installation around a lot of other cities. And at the same time that this is going on, the Toon Museum, who is like a cartooning uh, museum in Pittsburgh. Um, are doing also doing an exhibition of rubber ducks and <laughs> the uh, and the fight ensues. And the fight ensues. Well, basically, what's happened is he's a uh, uh, Joe Wass who's created a T-shirt featuring a rubber duck and is trying to sell these T-shirts, kind of leveraging off the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust rubber duck, but also his exhibition. Um, mm -hmm. And the Cultural Trust has said, "No, stop doing that. <laughs> we own our the rubber duck. duck. That's <laughs> our rubber That's duck. That's our rubber duck. Don't do that." Yeah. <laughs> But the actual rubber duck was apparently invented in the 19th century. Yeah, so the, what about where's the that, guy who's that man or woman getting their cut? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. About the, um, the, uh, the woman writing the blog made an excellent point. She says, it would have been one thing if they said, change the design on the shirt so that it's not our duck. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think that's right. probably the only technical legal claim they would have had. Mm -hmm. But right. that wasn't what they said. They said, stop selling these shirts. <laughs> There's an argument that the cultural trust has made it much worse for I, themselves. I get the impression the cultural trust needs the money too. Well, I, don't, I mean, they're not like a big business, right? No. They're still a, like a local government kind of organization, right? Yeah, and apparently this installation has cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> and it was, they're not clear, is that to the artist? Yeah. Is that to build? Build the 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 duck itself because yeah. the guy didn't actually he sent specifications. Okay, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. how you build a giant. Did he even come to Pittsburgh? Did he even come see it? Uh, it doesn't say. Yeah. You know, probably not. What happens when when we're done with it? Like where does the? I guess it deflates. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney kicked there. Sydney and Australia kicked there. So yeah. Maybe we can keep ass. Yeah. Um, and for our last article today, uh, also in the light-hearted vein, Dancer with the Light Thingy, animated light thingy. This is a really cool video. Yeah. Cool video. Yeah, it was called uh, Nuance, a dancer named Mark Antoine Locatelli. I'm sorry, Mr. Locatelli, I might go through that. Um, does this really cool thing where he's dancing, and it looks like he's fighting with this beam of light. Um, and uh, I, I was so enamored by this video, I watched it two or three times, and then someone watched it over my shoulder and said, no, oh, it's animated. And it totally took the magic out for me. <laughs> but um, my first thought about this video was, if you change the music that he's dancing to, it would t completely change the, uh, the feel. And it wouldn't feel like he's fighting. It felt like a video game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it felt like, yeah. Yeah, I, and I didn't, you know. Why did he, what did he have against the little light box? Why did he have to fight it? <laughs> Squelch it to dust? Well, his something. moves were so specific. My favorite one was that I thought he was yo-yoing it, and then I realized, like, oh, it had to be animated, because the light was, like, wrapped around his foot, and he was, like, doing this little thing. I don't know. Um, but the comments that other students had made about this video were all, it was well received. It was also, you know, that everyone was, like, kind of really impressed by it mm. and cool. wanted to know where, where it was going to go next. What's, I don't know that I don't know that you could turn this into a piece that's forty five minutes long to sit through in a theater. What would you do with it? I guess you have yeah, to get several people on stage, several people fighting. Two fighting minute video fight. is kind of like perfect. suffice. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's cute. Go check that out. Yeah, check out the video. It's worth the two minutes. 
Well, we want to uh, wish our home team, Pittsburgh Pirates, well tonight. It's their first playoff game in 20 years. Uh, that's all the news from the Real World Podcast this week. I'm Quinn. I'm Deidre. I'm Jody. Eleanor. Go Pirates. Woo. Oh. Don't you ever speak for the Pirates for me. No way. I'm a queen.